welcome to Lifestyle Solopreneur, the community for entrepreneurs who put lifestyle first. Join your host, Flavia Barris, as she interviews successful lifestyle solopreneurs and shares ideas to help you find the perfect balance between lifestyle, business, and self. Flavia is an attorney, marketing expert, and founder of several online academies. She's been featured in major media, including BBC World News, The Wall Street Journal, The New York Post, ESPN Television, and more. Join us for this episode of Lifestyle Solopreneur. Hey, Lifestyle Solopreneurs. Today we get to speak with Anmol Singh. He is a stock market trader and investor and also the author of the book, Prepping for Success, 10 Keys for Making It in Life. He is a high-performance coach for traders, investors, and business owners. He runs a mastermind. I mean, he is doing it all in the world of investing. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to chatting with you. Me too. I love to kind of hear origin stories. You know, like how does someone end up where they are today, doing what they do today? Especially when this is the world of finance, it's very intimidating for a lot of people. Uh, A lot of folks kind of imagine what stock trading is and they picture maybe Wall Street and people running around in suits and they kind of figure, oh, if you're going to work in in stocks, you must wear a suit and live in New York and be up in the morning at 4 a.m. or something. But tell us, demystify a little bit of what is this, this niche? What is this business area really? And how did you get involved? Yeah, totally. And I think this was definitely the last thing that I ever thought I would be doing. Growing up, I was horrible with numbers. I hated math in high school. Wasn't very good at it. So the last thing I thought was something I would be doing in finance. But it's interesting how if you kind of keep yourself open to opportunities in life and not just like completely neglect it, but like be curious and wanting to learn about it, uh, you'd be surprised things that you never thought were possible were end up maybe becoming your gifts. You talked about like how people wearing suits and moving to New York. Honestly, that's exactly what I thought. I mean, I wasn't from New York. I moved here because I was making money with my trading. So I said, okay, I should probably move to Wall Street, even though I'm literally trading from my home. I don't barely, you know, barely leave. But there's no reason for me to be in New York. But I got started like in my dorm room. I'm sitting there in my dorm room in college, 18 years old, watching all my friends get these internships. And I just wasn't able to uh, get in that mode of like finding a job or finding an internship. And I just found myself becoming really curious about the stock market. I think every guy at some point in his life wonders about the stock market. Oh, why does these stocks go up and down? Who decides the prices? And I just got really curious and I just dived in and started reading tons of books on this topic, uh, watching a lot of videos, all the documentaries. I just spent a whole year in my dorm room because being an introvert, that was a very easy thing to do for me. I would be more than happy to sit alone and uh, just read and research things. And the more I read, the more curious I became because it was almost like a puzzle that I was trying to solve. And the certain pieces were coming together as I read more books, more pieces were coming together. And I found myself becoming really like found, finding something after like a long time in my life that I loved. I just wanted to learn more about. And then I hired a lot of coaches, mentors, just like everybody else. You attend online webinars, you buy courses, you try to find a mentor that I can teach you what to do. And that's what I found. My mentor was Jerry Wesley, who's actually my business partner now. So he taught me how to trade the stock market and kind of tweak all the things that I was doing. So the, that was kind of the starting journey of it in college. And a couple of my friends, we teamed up and we noticed that there's a society in college for everything. You want to be an entrepreneur, there's an entrepreneurship society. You want to play football, there's a football club you can join. There's a club for everything. You're interested in boating, there's a boat club. There was no such thing as a trading or investing society. So we said, why don't we start this club? None of us know anything, but we'll just meet once a week. And we'll just talk about a book we read or what we learned about the stock market and just share ideas. And that group kept growing from like two members to five to 10 to 20, 30. And now many, many years later, uh, that's a thriving society and club running in college with hundreds of members that we started back in you know 2010. That's an amazing story. I, I love thinking that just a group of, of friends with a common shared interests decided, hey, let's just start meeting regularly. And now it's hundreds of students. And I mean, that's a great age too, because if you can teach someone in their late teens or early 20s what investing is and sort of to think about finance and to think about the numbers involved in economics, right? It's kind of education that they probably don't have a lot of classes in the, even the college curriculum called, how do you get involved in the stock market or how do you start investing? Some of those adulting skills, we just don't really teach in the college academic setting. I mean, it's such a shame. 
Absolutely. I mean, I, I graduated the whole great business degree, but none of that is what I really use in my real life. I think the real learning happens through life where you go through your own experiences and also like other people's experiences, like my mentors. Like, you know, you find these people in your life that come across you and just being open to wanting to listen to their experience. Because if somebody spent 10 years doing it, they've probably made a lot of mistakes that they could save you the trouble on. And I think uh, the real learning really happens on... So in college, the real learning happens what you do outside of the curriculum, right? That's kind of my uh, thinking with that. And yeah, they don't teach us a lot of these skills. Like I graduated, I know nothing about taxes. I know know nothing about any of this stuff. Uh, And these are the real life skills that I think they should be teaching. And that's, that's sort of what I aspire to do and what I've been doing for the last few years is teaching people financial literacy. There was one word that kept coming up when you were talking about your story. And the word was curiosity or, you know, that you were curious. That is one of my favorite words because it is such a valuable part of the human experience to be curious, right? To learn, to explore, to think about things and to get involved. That's how people find hobbies, right? Is curiosity like, well, how do you make a quilt? And then they they go to maybe a workshop or something and they're like, wow, I love doing this. I'm going to make quilts for everybody. Whatever it is that you get into. And that was what led you down this path. And so maybe a lesson for all of us today, including myself sitting here, is what can I be more curious about today? You know, what can I be more curious about this week? Because there's probably something out there that could change my life in a positive way. And the only reason I don't know about it yet is because I'm just not curious enough yet. So I love that reminder. Thank you so much for sharing that part of your story. No, thank you. And I think uh, you're absolutely right with that. Curiosity keeps you going when things get tough. Because in any entrepreneur's journey, things will definitely at some point get tough. Your vendors will leave you, your suppliers will leave you, your clients will go with somebody else. All these things can happen. But if you're curious, okay, what, why did that happen? Why did they go with the other person, not with me? The more curious you are about your own business, the better it's going to be. Because when things get tough, curiosity will keep you going and also gets you to ask the right questions. Okay, why did my clients choose somebody else? Right? What did they offer that I didn't offer? That's all being curious, right? And that gives us answers on how we can improve our own brand and how we can improve our own business. So I think those are some of the crucial elements of wanting to pursue something new. And the more you learn, the more curious you'll become. And guess what? If you're not curious about it, maybe that's a sign. (laughs) You know, maybe that's a sign. Hey, this is not my calling. Uh, But if you find yourself naturally gravitating towards a particular thing, you should definitely explore that a lot more because you'd be surprised that things you thought that were not your gift end up being your gift. Amazing. You've done something else that I think is such a, a great accomplishment. Something I encourage everyone who is in the, the knowledge business. If you're the kind of person where others come to you and say, can I take you out for coffee and pick your brain? Like if you've got a skill or some knowledge that other people want to know, then one of the ways that you can share that more widely without having to take up like a membership at a coffee shop because you're having too many coffees with too many people is to write a book. And you've done that. You wrote a book. It's called Prepping for Success, 10 Keys for Making It in Life. Tell us about the inspiration behind the book and the process of making yourself write it. Because I find a lot of people have a book in them that they want to get out in the world, but for whatever reason, they haven't yet sat down and written it. Yeah. So for me, the book was not originally meant to be like published as like a book that I'm writing, but it was more like notes to myself here's the 10 things that I need to do in my own life to achieve the success that I want. So I spent a lot of time, money, resources on hiring coaches, mentors, really working on myself from personal development. And then I hired a lot of coaches and mentors, attended a lot of workshops and retreats and spiritual retreats, trying to work on myself. Because you know, growing up, I didn't really feel like I fit in. I didn't feel like I belonged. And I felt like there was something missing. So I wanted to learn and I wanted to develop. And so I wrote after spending probably at this point, probably millions of dollars at this point on my personal development and hiring these coaches, mentors, paying these billionaires to their charity to just to have a dinner with them, right? I can pick their brain a little bit. So I wrote this book for myself out of everything that I've learned in my journey. Here's the 10 common themes that every successful person agrees on and the common themes in all of my journey. And I wrote it as a notes to myself as my own journal. And then uh, one day I was just sitting there. Some of my friends were over. They're like, this is really good, man. I learned a lot by reading your journal. I'm like, why did you read my journal? They were like, it's actually really good. You should turn this into a book. And then that's kind of what was my inspiration for that. But then I sat down to write the book and I found it extremely challenging. 
because I'm not a writer. English is not even my first language. I found it extremely hard to like sit down and write. So I did, you know, as they say in the Bible, right? In the beginning, there was a word. You speak it into existence. So I took an audio recorder out and I literally spoke my book, right? I spoke the book in an audio recorder and it turns out it was like a three hour or something recording that came out. And then guess what? I took that. I got it transcribed. Hey, can you somebody take this audio and transcribe it into text? And now I have a transcript. I have like documents. I have basically have a book in my hand. And then I hired an editor. I'm like, okay, I need you to organize this mess, right? And just turn it into chapters and edit it properly. So that was a quick process. Because if you sit down and write, it's pretty hard for most people. We have the book in us. We have all the thoughts. And if you're in a communication, if you're in a conversation with people, it's very naturally all our thoughts come out. When we sit down to write, sometimes we freeze. It's not coming to us. So what I found was the best to just speak the book into existence, uh, speak it, get it transcribed. Now you have it in written format. Now you just need to organize it into chapters and organize your thoughts to, so that it flows. So that was the process that I followed. That is amazing. I love that story because some of us are listening thinking, I'm not someone who likes to see that blinking cursor in a word processor. Right. I have to like yeah. type each word in the right order. By the time I finished typing a sentence, I forgot where I was going with that thought. And some people aren't writers. It's not their thing, but they can sit down and just speak for hours. Mm. It just flows. And so it's really nice to hear from someone that said, I didn't write my book. I spoke my book. I think that's great. So thank you for that advice. I know there's people listening who are, have a book in them and hopefully that book can come out and become reality and you're inspiring. Absolutely. And I, I would even go one step further, not to go religious on people, but Jesus didn't sit and write the book. He spoke it. Other people wrote it for him, right? So I think uh, if the best of the best, the world's best selling book can do it, and so can you. That's right. <laughs> You're following in, uh, in good footsteps, right? You're also a performance coach, a high performance coach. And you do that coaching primarily for people who are traders, investors, business owners. So how did what you do morph into that? When was that decision where you said, I'm going to plant my flag here and I will help others do what I know how to do. And uh, what was the inspiration behind that big decision? Yeah, so when I started in trading, I was trading for a different company in New York City. So I was trading their money. So I started kind of working my way up in the company. And then the CEO of the company called me one day. He's like, you know, you're doing really well. We just hired you like a year or so ago. And you're just crushing it. You're getting promoted. You're going through these levels in the company. Uh, Because each level, they give you a target. If you hit it, you get promoted. And I kept hitting targets and getting promoted in trading. So they said, but a lot of the new hires that we have, they're not seeing the level of success that you have. So could you maybe host like a live stream and just kind of share with all the new people we're hiring on what you're doing to get them up with the level? So I started, that's how I got into coaching is I started doing it for the company, coaching their new hires and the new trainees and the new traders that were coming in. Then I realized that actually it made me a better person. It made me a better trader coaching them. Because oftentimes I'd coach them and I'd be like, ooh, I noticed that in myself too. I, maybe I should be doing that. And as I was coaching people, I, I found myself getting better and better and the concepts getting more and more ingrained in me because I was repeating myself all the time with coaching. So it ingrained it in me and it actually made me a better trader. So that's when I realized that, okay, not only does it make me better, but it's helping other people. They're sharing the, uh, you know, their feedback on how it's improved their life. And I'm like, okay, this gives me a sense of purpose in the numbers. Because with trading, you can get lost, right? It's you and the computer and you're just pushing buttons and numbers. It's not much of a purpose there, right? It's You're making money, but it's not a whole lot purpose behind that. So when I could tie my gift of trading, investing and running businesses, but also coaching people, and that gave me a sense of like purpose within the numbers or the spreadsheets that I'm usually involved with. So I think that was kind of how I uh, got into it. And then the more I did it, the better I felt because entrepreneurship, especially if somebody's in the online businesses, or if you're a trader, investor, it's a lonely journey. You're sitting at home at your computer, you work from home, sitting in a computer, there's no colleagues, there's no employees, there's no like after work, you're going to go out and grab some drinks with people, right? There's none of that by yourself. So for me, creating a community of like-minded, growth-minded people also served that purpose for myself too, of like having people around me, supporting me when I'm doing really well, also picking me up when I'm doing down and same thing for other people that I do as well. So I think having a the right associations is super crucial. You're one of those guests that can inspire us listeners in so many different ways, because one, you're someone who's an expert in stock trading, which a lot of people want to learn more about. So you're someone who teaches that. But you're also just kind of inspiring as a general mentor, right? Because even the book you wrote, it's not 
hey, here's how you do a trade. I mean, the book is about life concepts. It's truly about helping other people live a better life. And so that's something people can come to you for. But then you also run this mentorship and coaching for people in the finance world and small business owners. So there's like a little bit of that for everyone. Anyone can kind of come to you and get what they need, right? Whatever it might be, whatever area. So how do people connect with you? What's the best way for someone to connect? I know that sometimes, and hopefully for our listeners, you can do this. You'll do a free assessment and strategy call. So tell us a little bit about how people can connect with you and what you can offer. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of offering, the main thing that I do now is that I coach and train people who are looking to get into the stock market, whether being doing it as a professional, you know, as a your main uh, gig, or people who already have another job or already have another business, but they're just looking to learn. Okay, how can I invest? How can I have some passive income coming in? So I'm not always working for that. So majority of my work is in in that area. But then uh, recently, a lot I've been more in the mindset because what I realized the common theme of people who make it and not is not the strategies. Because I can give anybody the best strategy in the world, but they're only as good as your ability to follow it. So mindset is a common theme that affects everybody. And I work with hedge fund managers. I coach them on their psychology and staying calm in the middle of like millions of dollars being risked every day. So that's kind of main things that I do. And a lot of that came from uh, the stock market, the lessons that I learned of controlling your emotions, not being greedy, not being fearful. So that's kind of the primary work that I do. The best way for people to reach out, like I'm the most active on Twitter and Instagram. My username on both of those is Delta90, D-E-L-T-A-N-I-N-E-T-Y. Don't ask me why. I had it a long time ago. didn't change it. So that's the username they can reach out to. And they can also go to livetraders.com or my website, unmold.net, and they'll be able to get a free assessment. They can book a free strategy call with a member of my team. So we can kind of map out your roadmap and see where you're at now, what your goals are. And if it's a good fit, if there's something that I can help with, then we'll definitely talk about that. But if I realize that maybe there's somebody else who's better serving you at this level that you're currently at, then I could always point you in the right direction of from other people if uh, we're not a good fit. For anyone listening who's feeling either just discouraged or in a rut, what would you offer as your parting words of advice and encouragement and inspiration for that person? I would tell you to feel it, feel the emotion much more in detail. Because if you're feeling a level of rut or I'm not going to my next level, I have more potential, then there's a voice inside of you telling you that you're meant for more. It's a guide. It's not necessarily something to be negative about. That's sort of a calling that telling you, hey, come on, step up. It's time. You can do better. You can be better. And learning to listen to those voices is super crucial. So number one, if you're feeling that voice, that means you're called for more. So that's a great thing. Now, second thing is you got to back that up with action, right? Because law of attraction, the biggest issue with that is people just think, 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 I'll visualize my way to success. Yes, you can visualize it. You can think your way to success, but you also have to think, feel, and more importantly, act. Do those actions that needed to be taken. So ask yourself, what's one thing that's making me feel that way? And if what was that one thing, if that was resolved, I would no longer feel that way. Ask yourself that question. And then once you get the answer to that question, you ask yourself, what's the next closest step that I can take to even move like half a percent close to that goal, right? And then when you get there, go another half a percent. So a story I like to give people is like, you know, I was extremely unfit a few years ago and I signed up for this, uh, what I thought was like a business retreat. And I get there and it's like a whole active lifestyle. People are running races and stuff there. And I didn't train for that. People were training three years for that. And I showed up and I was like, there's no way I'm going to run this race. And I ran, it was like a 10 lap race. Uh, First lap, I was exhausted. Like I was drained. I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I I just kind of started walking. And then this Navy SEAL came behind of me. He's like, hey, you know, we don't get tired over here. We're going to walk. I'm like, hey, no, just letting you be honest. I didn't train for this at all. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. So you guys go ahead, you know, I'll catch up. He's like, no, no, we're going to do this. All we got to do is don't think about the 10 laps you got to run. Unmold, do you see that tree over there? He pointed in the other direction. There was a little tree, maybe a few yards ahead. He said, can you just go to that tree? That's all you got to do. I'm like, okay, I can do that. I walked over, straddled along. I got to that tree. He's like, great. Now, do you see that tree over there? Don't think about the race. Just go to that tree. You can do that. It's just like right here. And I saw it. I'm like, yeah, it's like right there. I can do that. And I did the whole race. Tree to tree to tree to tree to tree. So that same mentality you got to apply to your business. Don't think about this massive mountain or the massive goal. What's the next step that I can take? When you take that, okay, what's the next closest one? And go after the low-hanging fruit, get some momentum, and then you'll see that you'll suddenly start to feel more excited rather than nervous about your uh, situation. Well, that was a fantastic story. Really enjoyed it. And just really such great advice. Thank you so much for sharing 
who you are and your expertise and your inspiration here on the show today. I'm very grateful. I know listeners are as well. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. It was great chatting with you. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast. And if you leave a review on iTunes, I promise I will read every single review. If you know someone who makes a full-time living from part-time work, and maybe this is you, please visit lifestylesolopreneur.com to nominate a guest or to nominate yourself. Because remember this, money doesn't buy happiness, but money in the hands of a happy person, there is no greater tool. Today's episode was brought to you by the Get Shift Done program. It's a lifestyle changing online class to help you define your business and lifestyle ambitions and to set goals in a way you've never experienced before. This class will 10x your daily productivity with methods that will blow your mind. And if you use the coupon code podcast, the class tuition is 99% off. Visit GetShiftDone.com to enroll today.